All right, you guys, welcome back to a Madden 23 Lions franchise video, and we are coming off of a 13-13 to -13 tie against the Packers in a crazy weather game. If you haven't checked out that video, make sure to do that. We have a couple other updates to kind of like the stats and our players and scouting um, that you should definitely look at if you have not already. But we're in Week 10 against the Dolphins. They are 5-4. and four. We're 5-3-1. and one. And obviously, they have Lamar Jackson, who surprisingly has only superstar development and not X-Factor right now. And he has 16 passing touchdowns on the season and only one interception. We also have an offensive breakout. And I'm guessing this is for Jamison, considering he just had 150 receiving yards. So let's see who it is for. And it is for Jamison. Um, so this is potentially to get him superstar X-Factor because he already has superstar and what do we need to get him in this game? We need to throw for three plus touchdowns against the Dolphins for a passing game boost, and that is it. So maybe it's not to get him X Factor, actually. But either way, um, the division is very tight right now if you look at the NFC North in the bottom part of the screen. We lead the division at 5 3 and 1, but the Packers are 4 4 and 1, the Bears are 4 and 5, and the Vikings are 3 and 6. We do not have a lot of separation between the three other NFC North teams. And so we got to come into this game with a team that has basically the same record as us and try to win, despite the fact that we have struggled to not turn the football over pretty consistently the last couple of games. It's been pretty rough. Um, before we get into the game, though, we're going to look at um, some negotiations for contracts. And so we already have resigned a number of players that were super important to us. Julio right now is going to become a free agent. He we just you know signed onto the team. Uh, and really, a lot of these are more veteran players that I'm not too concerned about re-signing. Glowinski, we're going to go ahead and try to re-sign him for a little bit less because he is going to regress when he turns 33. I'm going to boost up his bonus a little bit, lower his salary, and he is willing to re-sign for another year, which I like to see. Uh, that is a spot that we are trying to fill. Jerron Reed, we're not going to re-sign. He is a backup right end for us. Um, we're not going to worry about re-signing him yet. Julio would like to come back to the team, so I, I do like to see that. He has some interest in re-signing. Again, as our wide receiver four or five on the team, I don't want to pay him too much. Um, let's see if he's willing to come back for this amount. Uh, he doesn't want that. He wants more money, which uh, I can be, if I'm being honest, I'm not going to give him more money. Uh, maybe I'll give him as much as the initial offer, but I'm not going to give him any more than that. Um, as you know, a, a backup, backup wide receiver. And we're not going to worry about Nicholas Morrow or Shelby Harris yet. Um, and we may at some point try to re-sign Jerron Reed as a you know veteran backup, but it really depends on whether or not we see him as a mentor or if he has some other benefits. Because when you have a mentor on the team, if you guys did not know this, it helps boost your younger player's experience, uh, especially in, uh, in training. Uh, before the game, looking at the Dolphins roster, obviously Lamar at uh, quarterback. They also have Ezekiel Elliott as a 94 overall at halfback and Keenan Ingram, a second-year halfback, who is an 80 overall. At wide receiver, Mike Williams, Devontae Parker, Russell Gage, Russell Ramsey, who is a younger player, along with Keegan Boswell. Robert Tanyan is their tight end with Jelani Woods. Their O-line is looking pretty solid. Uh, Clyde Saxon is a second year player, left end, 23 years old. Deion Groves is a top, I think he was a top five pick uh, for the Dolphins at 78 overall. 24 years old at this point, has not panned out super well, but he was supposed to be like their superstar player. Quinnen uh, Williams at D tackle, 96 overall, obviously fantastic. Randy Gregory, Devin Bush, uh, Josh Uche. Uh, Trayvon Diggs at corner with Mike Hilton and Noah Igben I I can't say that name at all. Can't say it at all. David Long Jr., Devin Perkins at free safety, Darnell Savage, and at strong safety, Brandon Jones. All right, coming out in 3-4. I'm on Nate Vasher right now. We've got a lot of time to make a play. Tariq with the interception. Lamar's second pick that he's thrown of the season. And Lamar had all the time in the world to make something happen. Instead, forces it one-on-one -on -one to Tariq Wallen. And Tariq has started to make opposing offenses pay with jump ball passes thrown his way. He's starting to get those picks, keeping his eyes on Lamar the whole time and reading it and getting that pick. Trying to throw that one-on-one -on -one to Russell Gage, and that is not going to work. And yes, this is Sunday night prime time. 
in Miami. Jake Zimmer coming out after having per, uh, perhaps his worst performance of his career against the Packers, but 18 touchdowns to 15 interceptions, obviously doing a lot worse than his rookie season when he took over for Kirk Cousins, but uh, I can't fault him too much for the Packers game. It was insane weather. The, the wind was crazy and so was the rain. Ramondre again on the first play, gonna get him a touch, picking up some yards, making it on second and seven. Hebert out of the gun is gonna run for us. Get some decent blocks and gonna make it a third and five situation. Alexander Johnson coming down, holding his elbow it looks like. On third and five, we got Brian Jackson in the backfield. Cooper Cup and Posey have kind of struggled to get a couple of catches the last couple of games. But Posey coming down with a big grab, taking us down to the 32 yard line. Despite the inaccuracy again on that pass, poor accuracy from Jake Zimmer. And he may be suffering for a little more poor, uh, poor accuracy in this game because uh, he is getting a little bit of a downgrade right now due to his poor performance he's going to be losing three uh accuracy across the board short medium and deep and we thought we'd throw it to brian jackson instead we're going to try to run away and it's going to be uh intentional grounding some mental mistakes continuously from our young qb but at least he admits when he makes mistakes unlike some quarterbacks couldn't pose you over the middle able to hold on to it again just a huge target making it really easy making any quarterback's job easy and give brian jackson another opportunity to run the football running out left not getting many blocks only picking up a yard on second and nine we got posey on the double move over the top able to hold on to it in the back of the end zone a great grab by posey who completely dominated on that drive going up and catching it over the secondary and that was a tight fit for Jake Zimmer. One of his best balls he's thrown as of late. First and 10. We got Neil in right now. We're going to probably be changing that. Lamar and Elliott in the gun. We got Nathan Walls playing out deep on the slant. Jelani Woods with the catch. Getting the first down pickup. Jelani Woods is 6'7 tight end. who's very fast. And Baron Browning got burned by him. Three wide receiver set again here. Playing cover one, defense again, playing over the middle, and Sertan gives up the catch, making it first and 10. Nice grab there by Devontae Parker on the comeback route, completely burning Sertan. On first and 10, we're bringing a little man blitz. Again, this is something we gotta watch out with Lamar for him scrambling outside of the pocket. Christian Harris gonna play a little bit of a spy roll here. Instead, it's gonna be a run by Elliott. Again, having a fantastic season, but he gets zero yards on the carry. Now in single back again. We're dropping into cover three. Got Baron Browning in coverage as well. Watching everything over the middle. Instead, it is finally thrown under the middle. It's a fumble, though. Baron Browning on the recovery. And can Sertan get the block on Lamar? He does, but Lamar is still able to take down Baron Browning at the 31-yard line. But a huge play there, forcing the fumble and recovering by Baron Browning. Another huge fumble force by Christian Harris, who has just been a game changer for us over the last couple of seasons that he's played. Lionel Hebert on the first carry, losing two yards, not getting great blocks on the counter. Deion Groves making the play ultimately. And again, Deion Groves is a player we talked about not really progressing like the Dolphins would have liked, being a top five pick. And only, only being a 78 overall still as a 24 year old now. Got Jamison over the middle and an inaccurate pass under pressure from Jake Zimmer. His first in completion of the game. Hopefully that is not a sign of things to come. On third and 12, we're going to split check out as a tight end, actually. Send him on a go. And it is straight up man coverage. And Posey with another grab. Able to run after the catch, fighting off contact down to the six yard line. And Posey, unguardable right now by this Dolphins defense. On first and goal, we got three receivers split out left. Instead, we got Posey underneath, wide open again. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, my God. He completely burned his man, but he dropped the ball. And Posey was having an outstanding performance before that drop, and we cannot let that kind of sully what he's already done. We're going to go ahead and give him another opportunity. He's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup again, able to hold on to it for his second touchdown of the game. 
and nearing 100 receiving yards now with two TDs, and we're still only in the first quarter. Kind of like they said about Gronk, not a single linebacker is fast enough to keep up with him, and not a single... Oh, oh, a bad throw by Lamar under pressure. Sertan with the pick, and trying to return it, able to shake off Lamar and eventually going down at the 23-yard line. But not a single linebacker is fast enough, to fast enough to cover Posey, and not a single safety is big enough to cover Posey. And again, a bad throw there by Lamar. Uncharacteristic throw, trying to force it to Devontae Parker and Sertan skying up for the pick on first and 10. Threatening the run, gonna do a little play action here. And again, Posey in one-on-one -on -one man coverage, able to hold on to it and burning Darnell Savage on the play. Here we actually are gonna run it with Lionel Hebert, who's able to pick up the first down in the short yard situation. Only three carries for three yards, but picking up some crucial first downs. Gonna run it again with Hebert here. Try to see if we can get him some more yards. Good good lead block by Juszczyk, but unfortunately pushes Griffith right into Hebert on second and eight, running bench. Calvin Austin could be open underneath. Instead, Brian Jackson is there, who is able to hold on to it despite the pressure. It's gonna be third and five now. Got some crossers again here. If this is man coverage, it is not. It is zone, and we take the sack instead. Looking for our number one option in Posey so far. And really nothing was open on that play, as far as I could tell. We're going to take this field goal, take the 17-0 lead before the end of the first quarter still. Cannot be more happy with how this offense has played up to this point. And um, putting 17 points on the board feels a lot better than putting 13 on the board in the entire game versus the Packers. Lamar handing it off to Elliott who does not get taken down immediately. Instead, Hazelwood eventually comes over from the side to tackle uh, Elliott down. On second and six, we're bringing a man blitz out of 4-4. Four, four. Single back for Lamar. We got a lot of people up on the line. It's dangerous for Lamar to be passing downfield and a run by Elliott who gets thrown down by Damon Clark and Isaiah Simmons. On third and five, we're dropping into man coverage. This is a little bit risky. And Christian Harris won the tackle on Robert Tunyon. We got lucky because Lamar made a decision very quickly to throw that ball on the drag to Tunyon. And I was worried because man coverage against a scrambling QB like Lamar can be really dangerous if routes are going downfield. It can allow Lamar to really escape and, and get a lot of yards running the football. Instead, he opts to throw it too quickly and makes it fourth and one. And they have to punt. And now we can come out here and essentially end this game if we get another score. I mean, it's not going to be over, but it's going to be a lot harder for them to come back down 24-0. Hebert finding the hole and picking up the first down, and it's going to be second in inches. But a great run by Hebert there, extending the play and finding uh, the one spot where he could kind of fit through. Another run by Hebert, trying to get to the edge. He gets eventually tackled down after picking up the first down. Six carries for 17 yards. Nothing too fantastic, but again, we uh, got to rely on Hebert a little bit, especially when we're having some issues with throwing the football. Use check fumbles, though, off of the big hit, and they recover. Jake Zimmer trying to come out and get the tackle. He gets thrown down to the ground. Jamison just going to let Devin Bush get into the end zone for the TD, I suppose. And Devin Bush takes it all the way. Who forced the fumble on that play on use check is what I'm curious about. Use check, gets the ball, and then is getting tackled by Mike Hilton, and then gets taken out by Griffith, and then ultimately is recovered by Devin Bush. Well, just as I was saying, we could kind of put it out of reach with that possession. The Dolphins score on defense and immediately get right back into the game. And Jake Zimmer getting covered again on a read option where it looked like he had bit, looked like Josh Uche had bit on the running back, but instead is able to make the play on Jake Zimmer, and we lose yards on the play. Second and 14, we got Brian Jackson in the backfield on this play. Cooper is in the slot. And throw it underneath to Jackson, let him kind of make something happen. Getting us into a third and short situation, making it third and four. After losing yards on first down. And we're gonna have Cooper go on a curl here. This looks like it might be man defense. I believe it is, and we have Jamison over the middle, but it's an inaccurate pass, and we're going to have to punt it away. Jake, you know, can't fault him. Nine for 12, two TDs, no picks so far, doing a great job of not turning the ball over up to this point. But a couple passes that he probably would like to have back anyway. As Rashad Wild Goose on the right side, and they're on the punt return, taking it up to the 35-yard line. 
And now the Dolphins have a chance with Lamar to come out here and make this game a lot closer than it probably should be. But, you know, that one turnover killed us, and then getting stopped uh, has put the Dolphins right back in the game. Lamar in the gun. We're watching over the middle. Got a receiver out in the flat, wide open. Tariq with the big hit. On the run by Elliott, we missed the tackle. Nathan Wall's coming down in run support and finally getting a hit on him and slowing him down a little bit. Ezekiel Elliott does pick up the first down, though. And there's about three minutes left, and they're probably going to... It looks right now like they're trying to burn some clock so we don't have another possession. Watching over the middle on the curl. Sertan not doing a great job on the curls. Again, Devontae Parker able to beat him there. And I can't fault Sertan too much. He has been fantastic in coverage all season. But on the curls lately, he has not been overplaying them at all. And it's a play-action pass. We thought it might be a run there to Ezekiel Elliott. Walls in coverage there, getting another hit. They got two running backs in the backfield, or they got Alec Ingold back there as well. Ezekiel Elliott on the carry. Walls missing the tackle. Actually, Walls does make the tackle. Second and five. And we're in man coverage right now. Always a little bit scary when we're in the red zone like this. You got to watch out for all these different slant routes and corners. Lamar, one-on-one, -on -one, throws it up. And it's going to be a completion, at least for the first down, down to the two-yard line. And for whatever reason, Tariq did not fight to be in front of the receiver on that play. We're going to call a timeout before the end of the first half here. We were not in the right defensive coverage. Uh, we're on goal line right now. They're in single back. We got two receivers on the left. And it's going to be a run to Elliott. And Simmons is in the backfield immediately to force him for a loss. All right, we're in dollar right now. Oh, this is dangerous. And we do get the sack very quickly, this time by Baron Browning. But Christian Harris is holding his knee on the play. And he is an irreplaceable linebacker, and that would really hurt us if he was out for any amount of time. He is walking gingerly off the field with his helmet off. Looks like he's going back into the locker room, and I really don't like seeing that. We're dropping back into cover three. This is a little bit of a dangerous coverage. Again, with Morrow as our backup linebacker, who was only recently signed to the team. And one-on-one, -on -one, we forced incompletion with Isaiah Simmons, making it fourth and goal. But luckily... Oh, man. Luckily, it is a bruised knee and nothing too serious. Christian Harris is already back on the field. Popped right back in here for the uh, field goal block attempt. And so they're going to take the field goal and make it a one-possession game. we got a minute left here to make something happen. Brian Jackson on the return. Has been quiet the last couple of games. Good block set by Calvin Austin, despite how small he is. Taking it up to the 20-yard line. Haven't had anything crazy on returns in quite a while. All right, on first and 10, we're going to send Brian Jackson out wide, and this often will kind of mess up defenses. We're going to send Posey here on a go as well. And Jackson might have his man beat. We throw it up, and it looks like this will not be caught. Oh, Brian got his hands on it. But it's going to be an incompletion. And if that ball had the accuracy and actually led Jackson, that may have been a first down pickup and a little bit more. Run out to the left here, following our blockers. And Jackson doing a good job of picking up some yards, making it third and four. On third and four, a little play action. Could be a run. Throwing it underneath the Posey on the seam route. And able to hold on to it. We have no timeout, so we're going to go no huddle. Another play action here. And we got use check one-on-one. -on -one. We get sacked instead. And I don't think we have enough time to snap the ball. Oh, my God. We had use check gone one-on-one -on, -one on the play but Uche comes up with the sack and keeps it a one possession game before half we do start the second half with the football brian jackson on the return let's see if we can make magic happen again bo jackson's uh son brian jackson a great block and ultimately the blocking kind of fell apart once we got up to the 30 yard line but let's see an injury there possibly to their punter on second and nine, in the gun again. Again, they have not really worried too much about Posey, who has done so well in this game. And over the top again, Posey holding on to it, trying to possession catch it, and he is able to keep it in his hands despite the pressure from Trayvon Diggs. On first and ten, going to run it here with Hebert. A great blocks up the middle. Oh, and one truck absolutely throwing down Jones on the play. First and ten now. 
Run four verts. Jackson wide open. Able to hold on to it using his speed to get down to the 13-yard line. And we are destroying this Dolphins defense right now. A little bubble RPO here. Either giving it to Hebert or giving it to Cooper. And Cooper has got the one-on-one -on -one here. The block from Jamison getting to the edge. Trying to get to the end zone, but down at the two-yard line. Good use of the RPO screen there. To get Cooper involved in the game plan. And he's able to beat his man easily. His man was playing in the deep part of the end zone. Gives, gives Cooper a free touchdown there. Did a great job of manipulating the defense was Jake Zimmer on that play. Getting Cooper from the outside to end up being in the slot. And the corner was absolutely lost there. All right, we're in 4-3 right now. This is a little bit of an interesting coverage because we got Hazelwood dropping back. And that was a busted coverage there. Russell Gage getting wide open. And that can that can be the issue sometimes. We're dropping Hazelwood into a blitz. Of course, when we do that, Zekla Elliott is already running the football. So make it second and three off the carry. And to play a little cover two on this play. Actually, that's a little dangerous. We're going to drop back into cover one. And Nathan Walls matched up one-on-one -on -one with Russell Gage. I don't absolutely love it. We're watching the short out. Simmons is there to play coverage. But Robert Tunyon still is able to catch the football. Perfect coverage on the play by Isaiah Simmons. Doesn't matter, though. An insane catch by Robert Tunyon. Sean Hazelwood, one-on-one -on -one in coverage in the zone. Walls trying to get a stop. Instead, it's going to be second and six after the catch in the flat. Doing a little bit of a man blitz here. Walls is one-on-one -on -one with Robert Tunyon. And we get the blitz to work. Sean Hazelwood with the sack. And that is what we love to see, getting our rookie number one pick involved. Looked like he was going to be in coverage. He got fooled by that and was able to go unblocked. And that speed is what has allowed him to get that sack there. An elite athlete at 6'5", 86 speed, 90 excel. No one's going to be running away from him. The only person that might is Lamar Jackson. Tariq getting mossed on that play. Tariq has done such a great job not getting mossed the last couple of weeks that I can't really fault him for it. Um, even in this game, he's done a great job, so... I'll give him that one. Mike Williams making a crazy catch. Nathan Walls in run support. Isaiah Simmons missing. And Sean Hazelwood missing. And Ezekiel Elliott takes it in for the touchdown. In the pistol, sending Brian Jackson out wide again. Love to kind of mess with the defense when we do that. Going to have check just block here like he's our running back. And we got Posey on the out and a really inaccurate pass from Jake Zimmer. That's an easy throw to a wide open receiver. And we made it look like it was the hardest thing ever. And again, I don't understand why. That should be an easy throw to make there. Brian Jackson on the run. Picking up a couple yards, making it a third and seven. Deion Groves getting injured on the play. Again, the number one pick by the Dolphins a couple of years ago. Third and seven. Got Cooper underneath. Wide open. Did not cover him well in the drag at all. And Jake Zimmer has played a lot better in this game than he has last previous weeks. Again, we got Posey wide open underneath. We also had uh, Calvin Austin there as well on first and 10. Looks like he's going to be man coverage, but we're in a run play anyways. Brian Jackson on the run. Great blocks. Taking it up the middle here. Getting five yards on the play is not bad. And on his run, he gets to almost the first down marker. He's going to make it third and two. On third and two, we have Brian Jackson actually in the slot on this play, and we have Cooper set out wide, who is getting pressed by his matchup with little to no safety help. We're going to go ahead and toss it up. Hopefully the safety can't get there. He does get there, and it gets intercepted. Oh, man. Again, that's our mistake. We should have put a little more air, a little less air under the ball, honestly. Let Darnell Savage come over and make that play on it. And that is a brain fart by Jake Zimmer, throwing a really bad pick there. San Isaiah Simmons on a blitz off the edge. We're watching the curl. We're not getting any pressure right now. Lamar just throws it away, though. Zone blitz here. It's a halfback screen. Isaiah Simmons doing a great job leveling Ezekiel Elliott on the play. Third and ten. Doing a great job navigating his way around those blockers. A one-possession game to start the fourth quarter, and Lamar has not really tried to really run the ball all that much. We're watching the deep middle part of the field. Robert Tunyon catches it underneath, but out of bounds, making it fourth and ten. On first and 10 from the 32-yard line to start the fourth quarter. They have everyone up on the line. If we can get some good blocks on the edge, we can make a big run out of it. And we have 
Lionel Hebert making one man miss. Darnell Savage, I think it was. Actually, it wasn't. Getting up to the 46 yard line. After that nice run play, we're going to do a little play action. And Cooper is open, but we do get the sack. Coming in from Quinn and Williams, making it second and 18. We had Cooper wide open on the crossing route, but we could not get it off in time. Unfortunately, Hebert missed the block on that play. Yeah. Some press coverage on the outside, though, which I'd like to see. Oh, and again, not able to get the throw off, and it gets picked off again. We had our receivers open, but we didn't anticipate the pressure coming in. So we're dropping back, and we are trying to get the ball on the go routes to either Cooper or Jamison. And I think Jamison had a better chance of getting it, despite Cooper winning his uh, press release. But we did not anticipate Glowinski getting absolutely manhandled on this play by Williams, who just throws him to the ground and you know completely bull rushes him. And Jake Zimmer gets hit as he's making the throw. And that ultimately results in a free interception for Mike Hilton. Coming out in 4-6 Bear. Got a lot of people up on the line right now. They're in I form. And it looks like it's play action. We bring the blitz with Nathan Wall, so there's no safety help. And Tariq uh, eventually tackles him down after picking up the first down. We're going to zone blitz here. Watching the deep middle part of the field. And we just let go of the deep middle part of the field. Too late. We drop down to the running back. And they're able to complete that pass on the second crosser. And they pick up the first down. And now they're at the 30-yard line, basically in the red zone. In I form again here. Bringing the run, and Ezekiel Elliott runs it and gets destroyed by Demarcus Lawrence, but still picks up three yards on the play. We're now in cover three. I'm on Damon Clark. They're in the gun. Robert Tunyon, and I'll watch for him. And they throw it underneath, and Russell Gage making Tariq miss. Finally getting tackled at the seven-yard line. And Ezekiel Elliott runs it right up the middle, gain of two yards on the play on second and goal. They're still in I form. We're in 5-2. We should be able to stop the run pretty well here. Ezekiel Elliott finds the hole, but Harris is right there along with Baron Browning and they tackle him for a gain of nothing. On third and goal, they're in the gun. It's kind of what we expected. We're going to drop into fire zone two, bring some pressure. Oh, back left corner is open for Robert Tunyon though. We kind of helped a little bit too much on the slant. And we got burnt in the back left part of the end zone. And they tied the game 24-24. A good drive put together by Lamar and crew. We were too worried about the threat of the slant route on that play. And instead now we're going to have to come down after having a couple bad turnovers from Jake Zimmer. And put a drive together again. Something that we could not do against the Packers to ultimately win it. Our defense kind of bailed us out and we got the tie 13-13. But this game... Our offense is going to have to produce something. And Posey has been pretty quiet after starting off with a very explosive game. And I wonder if he might be open on this play action play here. And we get pressured immediately. We were trying to see if we could get it to Posey, but we take the sack for a loss of 12. Uche with his second sack of the game. On second and 22. We throw it off to Posey, who's able to catch it despite... Jake Zimmer getting hit on the play, making it third and 11. A big catch. Could have been an interception or a fumble. Posey now nine catches for 150 yards on third and 11. Trying to just not get hit here. Brian Jackson is up on the line. We got the underneath. Calvin Austin making the play yards after the catch. Doing a great job of being a playmaker on the field. First and 10 now from the 37. We're trying to speed the defense up a little bit. And a late throw and under pressure. It's going to be incomplete. Second and 10. We've got Jackson in the slot. Cooper out wide. In the slot though. An overthrow. Jackson was open in the zone coverage. It's going to be third and 10. And I can tell Jake Zimmer is feeling this pressure when he really shouldn't be. Going to do play action despite it not really mattering. We got Jamison open, though, with a catch. A huge grab by Jamison. That was our first read the whole way. Jake Zimmer was able to actually make a play. And, ooh, a dangerous ball thrown on the halfback screen to Lionel Hebert. This is a little RPO that's going to be using both Hebert and Jackson. Something a little unusual here. 
And the run is going to be there. We're going to take it. Could have taken it out to the edge and said cut it up field a little bit early. It's going to be third and eight. Herbert having a good game running the football, actually. Probably should have been using him a little bit more. Now in third and eight. It is zone coverage. We do have Jackson like we did last time. Jackson using his speed to take it down to that 15-yard line. And we've heard that one before. Going to move the tempo up a little bit and let Hebert run the football again. Getting out to the right side. Doing a good job getting down to the 11-yard line. Second and seven now. On second and seven, we're in the Wildcat. Trusting one of our elite players to make a play. Brian Jackson on the counter. Got great blocks, taking it up the middle and almost picking up the first down. It's going to be third and inches as the Dolphins call their second timeout on third and inches. We're going to let Hebert run the ball here. They're dropping back into coverage. They don't got a ton of people up on the line. A good run by Hebert. Able to pick up the first down despite not really reading the blocks correctly. First and goal from the four. Got a bunch of slants here. I don't think this will be open. We got the underneath to Austin who holds on to it. A crazy grab by Austin. Great coverage by the DB, but it didn't matter. Calvin Austin, not known for his route running ability, is able to get open on the play. A crazy catch again. Something I didn't think that he'd be able to make one-on-one -on -one like that. Wow. Christian Harris stuck in coverage. One-on-one, -on -one, though. Ryan Neal doesn't make the play as Russell Gage catches it down at the 44-yard line. They're getting a no huddle. They get no timeouts. They caught that in bounds. Christian Harris now in coverage. One-on-one. -on -one. Sertain can't turn his hips. And Devontae Parker is trying to get there. Christian Harris doesn't have the speed. Why is Devontae Parker outrunning the whole team? I did not know he was that fast. And they take it in for the touchdown in, in kind of an unbelievable sequence of events. From the 44-yard line, Sertan not able to make a play on the ball. Not able to even be near Devontae Parker. And then Devontae Parker outrunning Ryan Neal and Christian Harris to take it into the end zone, which I did not foresee happening. Devontae Parker now has three catches for 80 yards in the TD, and Russell Gage has six catches for 100 yards. Both of them having crazy performances. Brian Jackson on the return. Can he bail us out? Trying to work his way left, and unfortunately, no. He's going to be down at the 20-yard line. Now, we have been kind of trying to abuse this all game out of pistol. We're sending Brian Jackson into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Posey has the corner. We have all three timeouts. We have the chance to try and go for a field goal here. Brian Jackson's got the one-on-one -on -one deep, but the safety is there, and they get the interception with 14 seconds. Now, we just got to tackle him down. We can't do that, and they're trying to get into field goal range. At the 49-yard line, eight seconds remaining. They have no timeout, so this is most likely, unless they get out of bounds with a couple seconds here, this is going to be... Oh, they're trying to field goal from the 49. That's absurd. I can't believe they're going to try this. This is actually... This doesn't make any sense. Nathan Walls almost went for it. Now we're at the 44. We are now at the 44-yard line, and we don't have the opportunity to get a field goal here. We're just going to throw it up to Posey one-on-one. -on -one. He's got, it's kind of a two-on-one, but let's see if Posey can make it happen. He's had a crazy game so far. Oh, no, and we're going to OT for our second game in a row. And off the back of really just a lot of bad picks, again thrown by Jake Zimmer, and he has a turnover problem. And this is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going tails, tails never fails. We won the toss, and we're benching Jake Zimmer. We're benching him for the rest of the game. On first and 10, Kirk Cousins is in the 70 overall. He has not seen action in the regular season for a long time. On the handoff to Hebert. Hebert doing a good job of breaking off the initial tackle, only picking up four yards on the play. On second and seven from the 26, we got Brian Jackson in the backfield. Got him matched up one-on-one, -on -one, throwing it underneath. He able, he's able to hold on to it, getting up to the 40-yard line. On first and 10, it looks like it might be zone coverage, and it is. We got Julio underneath for a grab. Almost able to pick up the first down. It's going to be second and two. Kirk Cousins so far. Not throwing really downfield, but that's absolutely okay. Looks like we might have man coverage here. Cooper, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. A great ball from Kirk Cousins down to the 22-yard line. And Kirk has come in here and thrown some really great passes, sticking in the pocket, not getting pressured, or at least not feeling the pressure coming from the D-line. Great run here from Brian Jackson. Well, I don't know why I said great run. He got two yards. 
We're going to send Posey on a go. And throwing it over the top. Jackson one-on-one, -on -one, able to hold onto the back of the end zone. A huge pass to Brian Jackson by Kirk Cousins, who has stepped in to the starting role in overtime and delivered us the win. I can't believe it. Coming in here, ice in his veins, in overtime, in Miami, and throwing a perfect ball to Brian Jackson, having great accuracy on the entire drive. And a gutsy move, benching the starting quarterback for the older veteran has paid off and his whole team is dapping him up after that performance carrying us in overtime all right looking at the stats after the game Kirk Cousins with a perfect passer rating four for four 72 yards in the TD in overtime uh Jake Zimmer 21 for 33 300 yards four TDs and three picks uh, an imperfect performance wasn't terrible but was not great uh, the, uh, rushing wise, Lionel Hebert, 13 carries, 64 yards, a very solid performance, five yards per carry. Uh, Brian Jackson kind of struggled on the ground, eight carries for 27 yards. Uh, but that is kind of why we use both of them in the running game. Uh, one, sometimes one is hot and one is cold. Quentin Posey, nine catches for 150 yards and two TDs, having an insane game. One of his best performances of his career. Brian Jackson, ultimately six catches for 93 yards and the TD with the game-winning touchdown thrown to him by Kirk Cousins in overtime. Cooper, four catches for 50 yards and one touchdown. And Calvin Austin, two catches for 17 yards and a TD. And Jamison coming back down to earth a little bit after having a couple of big games. Two catches for 50 yards here, no touchdowns. Julio with one catch in overtime that was nice to see for eight yards. And that was pretty much it. Looking at the defense... Leading in tackles is Isaiah Simmons, as it has usually been the last couple of games. Tackles for loss is still Isaiah Simmons, along with Sean Hazelwood. Sean Hazelwood and Brandon, uh, Sean Hazelwood and Baron Browning. I always want to say Brandon Browning. Sean Hazelwood and Baron Browning each getting a sack. Tariq Woolen and Sertan each getting a pick. And then one forced fumble from Christian Harris and no defensive touchdowns. After the game, we got two upgrades, one for Sean Hazelwood and we are going to boost what should we boost on him we're going to just try to boost his overall as much as possible and he gets an upgrade to his awareness and finesse move which is not the best upgrade ever but again just want to get him up to at least an 80 before we uh, work on anything else brian jackson getting an upgrade and we are going to boost him up officially to an 80 overall and this may give him the opportunity at some point to get um I was just looking at his speed upgrade in a short route for a second, but this might give him the opportunity to maybe get star development at some point. Uh, but yeah, the speed upgrade is huge and plus two to short route. So now he has 97 speed and 94 Excel. His route running, as we know, is already very good because he was initially a wide receiver. But uh, yes, love seeing both of our rookie players getting upgrades after that game. Looking at the offensive breakout, I don't believe we... Did we get to it? I think we had five passing touchdowns. So let's see what that does for the team. Because I thought it was going to be an upgrade for Jamison. But instead, all quarterbacks are going to have plus five short, medium, and deep for the next three games. And all wide receivers are going to have plus five catch and traffic and spectacular catch for the next three games. So whether it is Jake Zimmer or Kirk Cousins starting, uh, they will have a big boost to their accuracy. And likely that would help Jake Zimmer quite a bit, who has been struggling lately. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. That was a big time game versus the Dolphins on Sunday Night Football. We beat them, and they have fallen to 5-5 five and five with an even record. And we have moved up to 6-3-1. and one. And just by the skin of our teeth, these last two games have been very close, going both to overtime. But I appreciate you guys who stuck around and watched the whole video. Make sure, if you have not already, to subscribe. And peace, you guys. I'll see you in Week 11 when we play the Seahawks.